Welcome to the Killjoy Jake YouTube channel. Today we are re-watching Megan from 2023. With the announcement of a sequel coming out to the film next year and a brand new spin-off that was literally just announced called Soulmate that's being described as an erotic thriller. What? I thought now would be a good time to re-watch Megan with all of you. This is a brand new series I'm starting on the page called Hot Takes. Not to be confused with Hot Ones, even though I'd love to do that one day. So like this video, subscribe, and if you want to choose the movie we watch next time, sign up for my Patreon. Link for that is in the description below. Thank you to all my patrons. Let's get into the movie. New Blumhouse logo intro thing. The old one was better. Story by credit, James Wan. Screenplay, Akella Cooper, who is also awesome. She wrote Malignant, Hellfest, bunch of good movies. <laughs> okay, can we hit a pause? Because this is what I think makes this movie so fantastic. We're establishing the tone of this movie. We are, you are getting a balls to the wall horror comedy here that I absolutely love. This scene drew me in the first time I watched it. I was like, okay, I'm in, I'm invested, let's go. Perpetual pets, what the f is this? And it craps its pants like me? Nice. I swear if someone does some nasty sh to one of those pets in that soulmate movie, I'm gonna lose my mind. You didn't know putting chains on tires was a thing? How long have you been driving in the snow, buddy? Cleared the road. It cleared the road. Megan. Mithrigan, one might call it. The key to fun is funky. It's, all, it's so close to Funko, it hurts. Is that old guy lost? What's he doing there? Someone get their grandpa. Allison Williams is fantastic in this movie, by the way. I absolutely love her performance here. Not only that, but she is stellar in Get Out as one of the main antagonists in that flick. I absolutely love any performance with her. I'm very excited to see what she does in the sequel. Is that what I think it is? It is the brand new pocket pussy from Funky. I can't get the erotic thriller thing out of my brain. How are they going to turn that into this or this into that? Ah! Okay, so what do we do? I guess we gotta open the door. I love this guy. I think the really interesting about Ronnie Chang's character here is that he's actually kind of right. Like, yes, he's motivated by greed, but he's talking about, I want to go simpler. Like, you're you're overcomplicating it. And that's kind of what Gemma's arc is of this whole uh, movie. She's made a device that's too good for for the kid. Like, it's it's literally re replacing parents and friends and all that. And that's the where the AI commentary of this movie really comes into play. I think the another big thing about this movie is not only is it hilarious, I love the horror comedy element of Megan, but it's also dealing with some really interesting themes here. That was like the most surprising thing about seeing this movie for the first time. I was not expecting it to go so hard with its themes. Some excellent stuff here that it touches on. Sharp as a knife. I might have forgotten to put in the polypropylene barrier. You can't forget about the polypropylene barrier. I hate when that happens. That's another thing about this movie for me. It's a Blumhouse movie with a good cast, which I can't say that about all of them. Hot take. I think this movie has an excellent cast across the board and that's what makes it so special. Like all the comedic elements really hit because you have comedic actors there. Ronnie Chang being a, a great example. The dramatic beats also work really well too because of Allison Williams and Violet McGraw, two excellent actresses in the lead roles here. I don't know if I can say the same about every Blumhouse cast member. There's usually only like one person who's like, oh yeah, I know that person from something else. It's a shame because when Blumhouse does have good casting, these movies really work. Why do you think this movie made like $181 million? And this is a little sad. It's like, I love, I love Megan. I love this movie. This is a scary situation too. I mean, you are now responsible for the life of another Another person like out of nowhere don't spray your chemicals onto my driveway that's well, definitely going not going to come back and five tinder notifications i'll see you turn off five tinder notifications that's more than i've ever had Gemma getting laid collectibles so you don't actually play with them <laughs> friggin dork i relate to Gemma so much here because like if someone picks up one of those movies too i'm like that's a collectible we're not watching that buddy <laughs> get your filthy paws off of that movie buddy that's why i have 4ks and dvds of the same movie it's fine everything's fine i'm not crazy you're crazy. Gemma's got OCD too. Don't, I don't think I really have any kids books here right now. I have The Exorcist, Katie. How about just that one scene from It? <laughs> just the one scene that we don't talk about. Let's just read that before bed. <laughs> Me? They live in Florida. They're kind of weird. I don't know what their deal is. Nice way to, to write those characters out. They're Florida people. That means they're weird. Hey, look at you, still in your pajamas. What's wrong with being in your so, PJs and watching happen? cartoons? The f Lydia? Those aren't toys. They aren't Gemma's collectibles. You're not supposed to play with them. You can play with them. You can see the soul leaving her body doing this. 
This is so me. I, I relate to this character so much. Uh, You're gonna need to make one or two adjustments in order for this to work. But I don't like change. You can use my iPad if you want. How long before I have to turn it off? Oh, I don't care as long as you want. You know, she's trying. And I, that's why I sympathize with Allison Williams, despite everything going on in her life, you know, she's still trying to make this work. I've actually been working with some furry creatures myself. I'm something of a furry creature myself. What's that? That's Bruce. Bruce is a little too obvious of a Chekhov's gun. One might say Chekhov's Bruce or, or, or Bruce, Bruce's gun. <laughs> that's, that's something I kind of get annoyed by with with, with these uh, Blumhouse movies sometimes. I'm just like, okay, we get it. This is going to come back and save the day at the end. You don't have to do that with everything. Don't make everything so obvious, Blumhouse. Again, I relate to this character so much. This is me in the lab trying to figure out what to do on YouTube so people will watch. <laughs> when this movie first came out, it was compared heavily to Child's Play 2019 because it does kind of have the same concept, right? But the reason that this movie works so much better for me, in my opinion, is because they don't just jump to the, the thing is evil immediately, right? This thing becomes evil due to its experience. It was so lazy in Child's Play 2019 to just say, oh, there's like this random switch in there that you can just turn off and magically it's evil now that sucks the scene we're about to get into lays that groundwork so well do you remember how much you liked bruce i think you're gonna like megan even more this actress got the movements down really well too i mean just in that walk you can see how like mechanical it was that was awesome she did that in like five seconds megan's incredible this is incredible what did i just say ronnie Human. Why'd she have sunglasses on? She's a robot. Back up. How does the water get outside the glass? It's actually caused by the difference in temperature. Dude, I would be so annoyed if my kid wanted one of those things and then it was correcting me all the time. It's like, actually, this is the thing from the internet. And I'd be like, shut up, <laughs> you disrespectful little piece of... I would punch Megan in the face. I don't care if it would break my hand. I'd probably still do it. Katie, seriously, flush the toilet. Katie's a serial pooper out here. Jeez. So you can spend more time doing the things that matter. That's the part of this movie that's so sad to me. I know some people are watching at this point and they're just like, that sounds awesome. I don't have to take care of my kid. It's like I can go and like watch TV and stuff. No, if you have a kid, you gotta take care of that thing, man. That's like why. That's why we do it. You know, I don't. I don't know. That's so frustrating to me. I know there are some people who like came away from this movie and they're like, oh, that sounds great. We should have Megan's in real life. No, it was the same thing with the Purge, and it was so frustrating to me. If you have a kid, take care of that thing. This is where we get that unique sense of humor from Megan that I think like it just really stands out in my mind. Megan, what's wrong? She's thinking about death, having an existential crisis, one might say. It's scary that, like, it has no reaction. That is freaky to me. You're so dead, Celia, you don't even know it. So why don't you ask her whose shit I'm cleaning off of my driveway? Because it's not mine. I'm actually shitting on her driveway, just for clarification there. Stop with the AI, and I'll stop with the poops on your sidewalk. Does the dog die? Y'all are about to find out. I feel like there's been a lot of dogs in movies lately named Dewey. Like this and Thanksgiving? What's up with that? Dewey! Me when someone asks, what's the saddest death in Scream 5? In the meantime, don't forget to take your antibiotics and drink plenty, please. Yeah, shut the f*** up. You don't have to do it if you don't want to do it. I mean, there are people who flew across the country especially to see it. Get her some chicken nuggies and some chocolate milk, and she'll be fine. Every day I wake up in this strange house, and I remember that my parents are dead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. That's so sad. I mean, I'm keeping it for you. Here. I'm not tearing up. You're tearing up. Tell me you're dead. <laughs> Everyone crying, that's so funny. Only time I will clap for AI. This one time, because it's fictitious. And I think she might want to be renegotiating her contract. Get that bag, honey. So here's how we turn it into the universe of Megan and not just a standalone film. That little moment right there. Maybe you're struggling to find meaning in any of this. I just want to drink my chalky milk and eat chicky nuggies. These questions are too big for me, dog. We're still in beta. You're still a beta, what? All right, everybody, tops or bottoms, leave it in the comments below. <laughs> Actually, please don't leave me that. I don't want to know. If you make a toy that's impossible to let go of, then how do you ever expect a child to grow? 10 out of 10, dude. That's why this movie works so well. Megan, turn off. Are you sure? Megan's feisty, dog. Where'd you get all that tood, young lady? Or uh, I guess it's a robot, so I don't know. It's a gray area. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is like that scene in E.T. where it's like, oh, which one's not the toy and which one's the alien from outer space, dog? Which one is the ball sack looking alien that does not belong here? Brandon, honey, are you warm enough? Do you need your hat? Fuck off, Holly. <laughs> 
God damn. You know, I just wish that this kid got his ear ripped off. I don't know why. Just the thought that occurred to me. You gotta just throw that kid out at that point. Let's throw him right in the trash. Hi, Megan. Hi, Megan. Hello. Oh, this kid's British. This kid is totally British. I think this is gonna be a good experience for Brandon. Oh, dude, I mean, look, for PG-13, this is brutal. We just ripped the ear off of a kid. I also love that, that again, Megan's running around like an animal. A lot, lot of animalistic features to this to this robot character. And we killed a kid. Blood on the pavement and all that? It, it, it is a brutal movie. I love it. I bet that mom is relieved now, though. I'm gonna be real. Megan's also got a little bit of a personality, which I find a lot of killers or characters that, especially Blumhouse is trying to like start and like be like, oh, this is like the new icon, like Chauncey. Chauncey from, from Imaginary had no personality and absolutely sucked. Like, I don't care about Chauncey at all. Megan, I do care about. She's got her own unique personality. It's, it's why I think a lot of people latched onto Freddy Krueger back in the 80s. It's why people are really digging this now. Do you think what Aunt Gemma said is true? That he's in a better place now? <laughs> no. <laughs> if heaven exists, it wouldn't be for boys like Brandon now, would it? <laughs> What? That's like my favorite scene in this whole movie, dude. That's so funny. What? Me looking for Dewey in Scream 7. Oh! Gonna get sprayed with a little bit of poison. It's all right. Ah! Uh. The entire thing was ripped clean off. Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. But <laughs> it's okay. I'm laughing too, dude. Dude looks just like the main guy from Criminal Minds, too. And yet all the moisture has drained from your eyes and mouth into other parts of your body. You're it's awfully you moist, so Gemma. Do you see this pen? I'm honestly shocked she fell for that. I'm going to be honest. I feel like Megan's pretty smart at this point. And what kind of a toy retails for $10,000? I can't believe how Jurassic Park inspired this movie is. Like, I'm thinking about the conversation between all, like, your main characters towards the beginning of the film. Oh, no, this isn't going to be just for the rich. You know, this is going to be for everybody. Everyone can come here. Now, imagine what a toy like Megan could do for hundreds of thousands of kids all across the world, even the ones who don't have dead pets. Even the ones who don't have dead parents. <gasps> when Megan's around, I don't feel like this. But you should feel like this. And this is why I worship at the altar of Akella Cooper. She knows how to write a damn good story. Take the elevator to the first floor and get me a kombucha. I'm really excited to hear the aftermath of what happened in this movie in the sequel. I'm excited to see how they deal with that. Other companies possibly developing Megan's or whatever. I'm here for it. That's my phone number. Megan's cloning your damn phone. Cole, how do you mess up that bad, bro? Oh. 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 Here we go. It's Megan dance time. Time to dance, Megan. That's what all the TikTok people are here for. This is what all the fans wanted. We just wanted goofy dances. That's all I care about. This is fine. Like, this isn't even the best scene of the movie. I'm going to be honest. And the kombucha is gone. I didn't kill anyone, Kurt. You did. Oh my God. Kurt is such a bitch, dude. One. That lady's reaction is a 10 out of 10. Someone give that extra a bonus check. Damn. And Megan's driving in style. Let's go. It's all that TikTok money coming in. Mm. This movie is a little long. Like this this should be wrapped up in 10 more minutes and we still got 20 minutes of this movie. Still good. All, all good stuff. Just a lot of good stuff. Maybe too much good stuff. Do you see this pen? <laughs> that ain't gonna work again, bro. Forever and ever and ever. Okay. For the record, I would also just go back to sleep. Look at how gross she's moving now. There's like bone cracking sounds, but like what would that actually be on her? Like she doesn't have bones. She's got like a, mel a metal skeleton. I wanted to say a melaton, but that's not right. Oh, caught the hammer midair. That definitely wasn't a ghost cut. Don't worry about it. We need more kills in horror movies with tree trimmers or like leaf, whatever those things are. Can you tell I'm a YouTuber and not a, a gardener? Okay, there the sound design was pretty cool. You got some metal clanking and all that. A short, sharp probe to the cerebral cortex would cause full body paralysis. Brutal, <laughs> dude. His name is Bruce. Okay, where'd she get those though? How you just pulling that out of nowhere? Hey, Bruce is gonna save the day. Ah, no one saw that coming. Let's go, Bruce. You can't sing your way out of this one, Megan. Oh! Oh! Ripped in half, dog! Nice! Let's go! Katie for the dub! Not gonna have that TikTok rot brain. Okay, maybe, maybe actually she will. 
Let's see. Oh, get that screwdriver in her head, bro. Hey, yo. Katie won Megan, like, I think she still got three, three kills? Three kills under her belt? Four, four kills. Yay, these characters lived. I don't, I don't care. Little tease for the sequel there, I dig it. So I really enjoy Megan, it's a fun one. Hot take, it's a PG-13 horror film that's really well done and very much so worth your time. I'm really excited to see what comes from the sequel to Megan as well as the spinoff film Soulmate. It sounds a lot like that one Black Mirror episode, but whatever, we'll still check it out sometime soon. I don't know if Megan needs to be a whole collective universe, but I do really like that first movie. And Money Talks, baby, $181 million at the box office, there you go. That's how you get at least two sequels to Megan. What do you guys think about this movie though? Leave me something about it in the comments below. Thank you to my patrons. Thank you all for watching. And as always, don't forget to kill it out there, y'all.